Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Adder with Blast. Here we are. No, 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 not Eden. Don't be, uh, whoa, easy there. Why would I want to be Eden when instead I could be the Lost every second run? YG64, three acres. Three acres is the place for me. Anyone else grow up uh, watching too much Nick at Night? And as a result, all of your cultural references are from shows that uh, originally aired like 30 years before you were born? Oh, man. All in the family. WKRP in Cincinnati with God as my witness. I thought turkeys could fly. The Bob Newhart show. Um, Green Acres, hitherto mentioned henceforth. I love Lucy, etc. It's the danger... It, well, not danger, but like, you know, my summer vacations, I have mentioned it a few times, but I lived in, uh, ah! for, I don't know, like six or seven years of my life, I lived in a, uh, a duplex where my parents and I occupied the ground floor and my grandparents lived on the upper floor. And, you know, during the summer vacation is a pretty sweet gig, I'll admit, because you don't need a babysitter ever. You don't need to send your kid to summer camp. You got, you know, some retired grandparents there. Um, they can just watch over you, right? Uh, so I ended up... Excuse me, bozo? It's a, it's a small damage up, at least. I ended up watching so much TV with my grandma. You wouldn't believe the number of episodes of, uh, like, Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. And then a few episodes of, like, Live with Regis and Kelly. I'm glad to have gone to the room, at least. I don't even know where we're at. Like, it was Regis and Kathy Lee. Then Kathy Lee was like, I got F you money. I don't need to be on the show anymore. It became Regis and Kelly. Fair enough. Then, I think Regis was like, brother, I'm 90 years old. So they got, like... Like, Michael Strahan and Kelly Ripa, and then, like, Kelly Ripa was like, I don't want to do this anymore, so it was like Michael Strahan, and I, like, I don't even know where we're at anymore. I wonder what it's like to have a, t a TV show that exists not based on the personalities, but based on the time slot, you know what I mean? I know, that sounds needlessly rude, I don't really mean it that way. What I mean is, like, old people? Sick people, etc., etc. They're always gonna need something to watch at nine in the morning. <laughs> it's like the six o'clock news, right? Like I think very few people are like, you know, I wouldn't normally watch the news, but that anchor they got is really bringing the heat lately. You know, the anchor is kind of like a, an ancillary character. People who are gonna watch the news are gonna watch the news uh, no matter what, no matter who's on it. I don't, I don't have that situation in my life right now. I don't know if I want that situation in my life right now. I, I've kind of got the opposite, where people are like, whatever you do, I'll watch. And I'm like, oh, you should really value your time more than that. But thank you. To just be like, you know, hey, what's your career? Eh, we, we're just chipper in the morning. That's, that's our, that's our brand. Coming up next, the new song from Sting. That's not in the morning. That was that was a nighttime primetime news broadcast. Anyway, we leave you with a new song from Sting. <laughs> anyway, where was I going with that? I don't know. I gotta. You know, one of the things about being. I, I saw a tweet that cut me to the core today. It said. When you turn 30, you have to choose a subclass and stick with it. And there were four subclasses, like in an RPG context. Streamer slash podcaster, beer guy, guy who bikes to work, and golfer. And it cut me to the core, because I have been three of those guys. <laughs> Streamer podcaster, that's, that's after doing my final respec, that's where I chose to be. I have definitely been bike guy, there's no doubt about that. 
I was a beer guy for like a while, you know, when I first moved to Vancouver and like for a couple of years after that, you know, it's got a great craft brewing scene. Um, I'm, I'm like in the opposite camp now, to be honest, like, I'm not quite a teetotaler, like I still do have the occasional adult beverage, but, but very rarely, and don't, don't shoot the messenger on this one, fellas, or ladies for that matter, but... I think that a lot of craft beer guys are just kind of like people who like to drink and then this gives it the guise of having a hobby, okay? I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to hit the hornet's nest. But I, you know, I had that conversation with myself at some point where I said, Am I really a guy who likes craft beer or do I just like sampling adult beverages that have like, you know... 9% alcohol by volume level, and if it's the... If it's the latter, maybe I should chill out a little bit. So I, I, I unspecced from that class, I found that the play style was not for me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll check the curse room as well. I've never been golfer, but I have expressed on many occasions my desire to be golfer, for sure. I think, honestly, every time I bring it up, chat thinks I've lost my mind, but I'm like, I think golf, if they could make it a little cheaper, is like a, it's a good sport, you know? It's low impact, a good casual sport, let me say. It's low impact, you get outside, you hang out with your, with your friends, you get to drive a bespoke vehicle. <laughs> Specifically made for the- Who doesn't like doing that? Who doesn't like driving a golf cart? Everybody wants to drive the golf cart. Don't lie to me. Everybody wants to drive the cart. Anyway, hold on. I have received a, a tweet from Ben Prunty. He made the soundtrack for FTL. He's replying to a tweet. Hey, I've heard you're into games with wicked soundtracks and aesthetics. I'm the dev on one called Crossnick that came out on Switch last month. It's a puzzle game with a Y2K Dreamcast aesthetic. You down for a key? Bre ben Prunty says, Hey, Northern Lion, this is legit. Okay, so there's been a concentrated behind-the-scenes collusion. A slack conversation, perhaps, has taken place between two individuals who are, who are colluding very selfishly to get me to try out a good video game. I'm normally very hesitant to this idea, but because you... I'm, I'm impressed with the elbow grease and the creativity involved, I will. I will I'll, I'll reply to that tweet when this episode is done. When you're watching this episode three weeks later, make sure to keep me honest. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm gonna play it on YouTube because I don't know I haven't played it yet. It might not necessarily be a fit for YouTube. I'm playing a puzzle game that's definitely up my alley with the whole Bumbo thing going on right now. But like, I'll give it a try. And Y2K aesthetic, like, I mean, I was 12 when Y2K was, you know, the specter on the horizon. So like, that's that's right up my alley. I was thinking about it. I I, I don't know. So, like, I, I, I kind of fallen out of my TikTok watching a lot, mostly because we've been moving, so I don't have time to watch 15-second comedy sketches. But, um, you know, all the comedy sketches about being Canadian are like, Canadian check. Hey, bud, got my double-double double double from Tim's. Oh, frick yeah, bud. You know, I've, I find it almost, um, well, lazy, yes, but, you know, you're watching TikTok, what do you expect? The real Canadian check, in my opinion, is this. If you want to know what it was like to be a Canadian in the mid-2000s, my, my prevailing aesthetic and memory from that era is eating Subway like three times a week. When I think back to like the year 2003, 2004, my number one memory is that everybody was eating Subway at all times. We, we as a country had become convinced that eating a foot of bread was not that bad for you. Um, but egg yolks were the devil. And uh, 
moreover, that it also coincided with, like, when I was, like, eight, you know, in the mid-90s, there was, like, two subways in my town. When I was 15, there were, like, a subway per block. You, like, multiple subways in the, in the same shopping mall. That's what I remember from the mid-2000s. I think I'm just going to save my money, because we got a great item. I'm disappointed we lost our deal with the Devil Chance. We got a great item. We got a good deal with the Devil Chance on this floor, um, because of the Spirit Arts we got going on. And I want to save our money so we can maybe get an arcade. But this is this run is, is popping now. Like, the, if you want me to just hit you with some rapid-fire images of, of, like... You know, if you wanted to make, like, a, a 2004 starter pack... It's a foot-long turkey sandwich from Subway. Uh, yellow Cards Ocean Avenue. The Click Wheel from the original iPod. I remember, dude. One of my friends had an iPod. Took it to school. I mean, there's always, like, you know, MP3 players. But, like, when he came to school with the iPod, we were like, this is... This is fricked up. This is the future. You're telling me you can play Missile Command on that thing? I don't even like Missile Command, but just that you can play a game on your MP3 player. The future is now. I always like... Look, okay? I, when I think back to my high school experience, I talk a lot about being old, which I'm not. I don't really talk a lot about being young, you know? I know Malf and I occasionally we talk about our high school experience, but the number one thing that always strikes me when I when I think back to high school Hold on, this is a big moment here. Is that Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> is that the adults that were in charge of that school really let us down from a nutritional standpoint. I don't think this is gonna be controversial. But, the we had a cafeteria at our school. And in, I, I finally hit the age where I can tell you things that you will find unbelievable if you're 10 years younger than me. My first year of high school, if you wanted to buy a hamburger, 65 cents. Anyway. The hamburger was not good, just for the record. But... I was, you know, at the same time I was buying a hamburger for, for 55 cents, my grandpa was telling me stories about how he used to buy, like, a Coca-Cola for a nickel. And I was like, that's insane. Six, three quarters? I'll keep the change. I'll have my lunch, please. Anyway, um, the, the only, there was no healthy food in our, um, cafeteria whatsoever. The most popular order was, uh, french fries. Which, you know, I, I, I think that's probably pretty standard. And to be fair, if there's ever a time when it would possibly be okay to eat exclusively french fries for lunch, it's probably when you're a teenager. Now, should you be doing it ever? No, probably not. But I'm not a nutritionist, okay? After french fries, the next most popular dish was battered french fries, which were just french fries that were like twice fried and crispy. The third most popular dish was poutine, which was you could have battered or unbattered. It was french fries with gravy and cheese curds. Then you get your cheeseburgers, your hamburgers, your weird square pizzas, and your etc, etc. Um... I am just, like, I, I, if you're in high school right now and you're watching this video, is that what it's still like? Because, like, Super Size Me came out in 2004, okay? And at the same time that we were exclusively eating french fries for lunch. Mind you, I, I brought my lunch from home four out of five days a week. Um, when Super Size Me came out, everybody was like, duh, I know, it's not good for you. Just don't eat so much of it. <laughs> Who does this guy think he is? I just... I'm not trying to infringe on your right to eat junk food if you want to. But... You know... I think I've, I've had this exact rant in an Isaac episode before. And I eat food that's not good for me from time to time. I'm not like a nutritional fascist, you know? I'm not like, oh, potato, no thank you. I only eat sweet potatoes. 
Um, but you know, I, I minimize it as much as possible because I want to, not because I'm looking to get like, you know, 10 pack abs, but because I want to live like a, a long, healthy life. And you know, especially, you, you won't believe me temporarily, but you'll believe me at some point. The older you get, the worse you feel when you eat stuff that's bad for you. As a teenager, you know, I could eat the fast food combo. And I, you know, I started, I, I was like a 9 out of 10 when I started it. I was a 9 out of 10 when I finished it. Now, if I eat like fast food, I'm like a, a 6 out of 10 happiness <laughs> when I started. Okay, this is helpful. Thank you. Um, and then I'm like, a, I'm like a 7 out of 10 when I finish it because I'm like, oh, that was good. But then like an hour later, I'm like a 4 out of 10. It's diminished my happiness. Um, but I just think, like, you know, the option should have been there. I'm not even... And here's the thing. If, maybe it was an economic thing. I'm sure... I, I'm like, well, they should have been offering big salads. What kind of 16-year-old kid is going to walk in there? You got, you got five bucks burning a hole in your pocket. You want a burger and fries like your, the rest of your friends? Or do you want to get a big garden salad? You know? But still, it just... <laughs> it's surprising for me to think back on. The access that we had to stuff that was bad for us. And that's part of being a teenager, I think, is... You know, eating chocolate for dinner or whatever, but... It feels so foreign to me now. We also, like, we had vending machines in our school. Um, and, and water fountains, to be fair. As I always hear, like, whenever there's an argument about drinking fountains, or, like, a, dis a debate about whether, whether or not there should be, sorry, vending machines in, in high schools and elementary schools and middle schools, I'm always like, what's the problem? And then I read some nightmare story where, like, the school district got an exclusive contract through Pepsi that was like, oh, we'll give you vending machines, but you have to rip out all the water fountains in your school. And I'm like, well, obviously, don't do that. <laughs> Are you insane? Okay, I, I squandered the devil deal here for this. It's okay, we just got it on the previous floor, and it sucked anyway. Next floor, let's get this guppy dream to, to come to pass. But like, if I had to pick the, uh, the average meal for like a 16-year-old high school student, if they didn't bring their lunch from home, there was like a 95% chance that it would be like French fries with sour cream and ground beef. That was those were called Mexican fries. That was like a Tuesday thing, I think. Um, please, I could I could really use some support here to help me get maybe the blood bag or IV bag. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll do it myself. There goes our deal with the devil chance. Um, and like a Pepsi Blue, which was a weird thing that Pepsi made for a while where it was like... It was Pepsi but sour. <laughs> I don't really know how to... Look, I've lived through a lot of weird sodas, okay? That's not even my favorite weird soda. My favorite weird soda was when Coca-Cola made a, a product called Coca-Cola Black. And it was just Coca-Cola but coffee flavored. And if, you, if, if you've been around for a while, you're going to be like, NL, here we go again. I'll tell the story. I'm going to tell it again. Get ready. The, like, my last week of my freshman year of university, we went to the, I forget what it was called, but, you know, the, it was like a, a grill plus convenience store. So you could get, like, you know, chicken fingers. Or you could buy, like, a bag of sweet chili heat Doritos or something. Um, anyway... They were selling Coca-Cola Black packs of 12 uh, bottles. Buy one, get 11 free. So essentially, for a dollar, you got 12 bottles of Coca-Cola Black. That should give you some idea of how popular this product was. <laughs> they, they made it 92% off and still could... It was like the pallets were stacked to the ceiling. So, I, I bought a few of those. And I gotta tell you, Look, was Coca-Cola Black the best Coca-Cola product ever invented? No, it kinda sucked. But, it was a steal at 8 cents a bottle. 
When I say it sucked, I don't mean like, oh, it was unpleasant to consume. It was just, you know, I would rather be drinking other stuff, I suppose. But at eight cents a, a container for a flavored beverage, you could go to the recycling depot and get 10 cents back on the plastic bottle. It's a, it's a very, very roundabout money-making venture. That's how discounted it was. Anyway. Regardless of all this. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, I would like you to give me a better deal with the devil chance, please. That's where I'm at right now. Did, uh, did we not go into a curse? No, it was a boss trap room. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to go back and play the blood bank anymore. It honestly kind of freaks me out a little bit. I think we're, we're kind of content where we are. We hope to beat the odds a little and get a deal with the devil here. If not, just preserve this demon heart. Hopefully get it on the next floor. Because, like, this is... It's a potentially spicy situation. Surely, like... Here's the thing. I, I, I think about nutrition now and then. Not be, because I, it's actually something that I'm, like, passionate about. But it's, it's, like, emblematic of how, like, cultural norms change. Right? Like... I think about, like, my dad. My dad, when I was growing up, he probably drank, like, two sodas a day. We kept soda in the house. Um, and then, like, you know, he stopped drinking soda. And it was kind of, like, a big deal. Like, I remember there were, like, months where he would talk about it. He's like, oh, I haven't had a soda in, like, three months. And honestly, I feel really good. As a, as someone that was a generation, like, you know, beyond that, we had kind of a, we did get the deal with the devil, thankfully. It still kind of sucks. We had a little bit more nutritional information, you know, and, and once I got to the point where I was able to make my own decisions about nutrition, I was like, I'm not going to drink, like, a non-diet soda. It's just empty calories. You know, it's, it's, it's not very good for you. And I, you know... My dad was raised by, you know, two people that were born in, like, the 1940s. Um, who, like, my grandma still has, like, a, a can of Coca-Cola for breakfast some mornings. Like, you know, as time goes on, I, it, I feel like <laughs> people are, like, they're learning. For the most part, I think. Surely, though, like, this next generation... Like, if, if you're 10 years younger than me, if you're watching this and you're, like, you know, in your early 20s, you guys must have gotten even more information, right? Like, it, I was, like, 16 before I found out that, you know, juice from concentrate was bad for you. I, I grew up, like, my, the first 16 years of my life, I was just like, it's fruit. How could it be bad for you? Well, because it's, like, you know, incredibly sugary and you know for the most part if you're thirsty you should probably just drink water if you're hungry you know of course eating a piece of fruit usually not that bad but like you know if you're drinking like six glasses of orange juice a day just because you think it's like for vitamin c or something like that it's gonna have consequences you know that we didn't have access to that information as a kid we were eating dunkaroos but i don't know maybe it's maybe it's the same now Beats me, brother. I haven't been in high school in a long time. It's pretty wild. Think about it. Like, I graduated from high school more than 13 years ago. Pretty crazy. You know, there have been Isaac episodes where I've been like, I don't know, I probably won't go to my high school's 10-year reunion. And then, like, you know, I didn't. But also, like, I don't think there was one. And moreover, um... That would have been three years ago. I don't like... So, we, Malf and I have talked about it. Like, we, I see no reason to buy, like, a plane ticket and go back to my high school reunion, even if there was one after, like, 20 years. But, like, some people are like, ah, go and have fun. I'm like, man, I just don't get it. What's, what's, what's the fun about a high school reunion? By the way, if anyone, from, for cynical reasons, would have fun at a high school reunion... It should be me, except for the fact that I've gone bald, but, you know, that doesn't bother me, honestly. I mean, we love all, everything going on here. Just don't screw it up. 
Okay. <laughs> You're gonna grab this. You can do it either way, but I think I'm gonna do it this way just to be safe. Because we got the Guppy Dream now, we got the knife. Okay, good stuff. Um, but you know, like, I have... From a duty perspective, what is definitely a dream job. I, I do pretty well financially. I have moved from my small town to, uh, you know, one of Canada's biggest and most beautiful cities. You know, I'm, I'm married. You get, you get the idea, you know? And even then, you know, people... It, it, for cynical reasons, you might be like, oh, you could go back and, like, dunk on people. I got no reason to do that. I have no quarrel with those people. But then also beyond that, I got things to do. It's not like I'm embarrassed to go back to my high school reunion. It's more just like it's inconvenient. But even if you put it like within 20 minutes of where I lived, I would probably not go. You could put it downstairs and I would be like, ah, eh, maybe I'll show up. Just doesn't appeal to me. I think it's one of those things, you know, the John Mulaney joke? It's like, you know, uh, as a kid, movies prepared me way too much for the probability of encountering quicksand. I feel like that's true for a lot of things in life. One of them is high school reunions. I feel like there's, there's so much media about high school reunions versus how often they actually, like, play a pivotal role in a modern person's life. I don't know, maybe it's a millennial thing. Maybe millennials are like, you know, once you're once you're done with high school, you're like, you know, I'm too busy trying to make my finances recover after living through uh, the dot-com bubble in the recession. That's not really fair. That's a little misleading. I didn't really live through the dot-com bubble. I was 12. I didn't own any securities. <laughs> uh, let's not. We're already guppy. Just get him, please. Like, you, you can do it. You don't need me to be there. I don't know, man. As always, I want to... People, people, myself included, sometimes like to argue on the internet. If you want to go to your high school reunion, if you want your kid to be eating Doritos for lunch, I mean this with all sincerity. Tommy Lee Jones voice from The Fugitive? I don't care. It's not really my business. I'm just saying from my personal perspective. All <laughs> I lived. And we got a 9% deal with the devil, which is just uh, stunning. So I think we'll start there. Nothing else is honestly that relevant, I feel. This is a dream come true. <laughs> this run was two floors ago. I was not sure if we were going to make it, but I had confidence. Now I'm like, oh, it's the easiest run we ever could have asked for. Also, it blew my mind when Josh told me that whoever's elected class president for their graduating class is responsible for organizing the 10-year reunion. That's a lot of responsibility for, like, a 17-year-old kid to sign up for. It's like, hey, first off, so you gotta go to these meetings once a month, and then you get to have, like, your say when it comes to allocating funding. Uh, oh, and also, a decade from now, you have to organize, like, a big party. <laughs> Surely that's not legally binding, right? Like, if you won class president, ten years later there wouldn't be, like, a, a, a process server coming to your door that's like, hey, remember this? Your past has come back to haunt you. I'm sure it's the kind of thing. It's like, you know, you get an invite from a, a particularly precocious classmate that's like, hey, let's start planning the reunion, and then you just delete your Facebook. It's just that easy. Oh, Zeus. Which you probably should do anyway. It's crazy. Like, dude, when I saw the movie last night, um, there's this ad with the Muppets for this uh, Facebook product called Portal that is a camera that gazes into your home. I know, right? Like like, like an Alexa or like a, maybe a Google Nest cam, but, you know... It, Facebook has had such a, like, a PR disaster for being, like, absolutely horrible over the past five or six years. The, the fact that, first off, I was like, yo, the Muppets sold out. 
They're doing a Facebook ad. Jim Henson is like rolling his grave right now. Secondly, when it said portal by Facebook, everybody in the theater gave it like a, a cynical chuckle. Who in their right mind? Like if you're watching this and you own a portal, what are you thinking? The company that's collated all of your personal information, uh, you know, revealing it to advertisers, targeted political misinformation campaigns, etc., etc., congressional hearings with Mark Zuckerberg personally present. You're like, oh yeah, I want them to watch and hear every expression, every behavior that happens in my home. Why? That's crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'm so great. The old course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya.